Hello again, YouTube. I am today doing a video tutorial on making clothing for your second life for beginners. Um, this video is kind of long overdue. Uh, I noticed a need for and I desire for these types of videos with um, my tattoo making video. Um, so anyway, um, making clothing for Second Life, basics for beginners. Um, I wanted to make this video tutorial as simple as I could for you. Um, however, when I started to make this tutorial, I realized there is a lot for you to know um, to learn how to make clothing for your avatars in Second Life. I still want to try to make the process as um, easy as possible for you, so there may be some more advanced methods that I will probably leave out for this video, um, and I may have to break this video down into a couple of parts. Um, the beginning here, I want to talk about the things that you need in order to get started. Um, so anyway, um, I was thinking what would I need to know if I've never done this before and had no clue. So let's get into that a little bit. Software. Um, I know you're probably thinking, God, do I have to buy more software? Um, it's really not that difficult uh, to get started. You don't have to purchase all of the software. As a matter of fact, you can do this with totally free software. So if you don't have it, don't worry. We'll get you what you need without costing you a dime. Of course, if you have the paid for programming, some of it um, works rather well or better than some of these. Um, the ones that I'm going to show you work just as well. Um, maybe a little bit different learning curve on them, but the, they work just as well. Um, but if you already have them, great. If not, you can use the ones that I suggest here. So let's get started here um, on what you need to look for. The first one that I want to mention is GIMP. GIMP is um, freely it's a free distributed piece of software suitable for task, uh, such tasks as photo retouching, image composition, and image authoring, including making clothing for Second Life. Um, you can download GIMP at http www.gimp.org if you're interested in getting GIMP, if otherwise if you have Photoshop or some other uh, photo editing program that you prefer, you can use those just as equally, equally as well. <clears throat> Next will be Blender. Um, you don't necessarily have to have Blender, but it does help with some of the process. Um, Blender is a free and open source software. It is free to use for any purpose forever. Um, if you look back at my tattoo tutorial, you will understand why I recommend getting this, even if you're just making the basic applier clothings for the legacy layer clothings. Um, it can be useful and help with uh, avoiding distortions and whatnot. Um, if you've watched that video, you'll definitely know what I'm talking about. Uh, this program will help you, will help a lot um, also with the avatar file um, that I'm going to give you. It gives you a better idea how your clothes are going to appear in the world. Um, so if you're interested in getting the um, blender, you can go to https um, semicolon forward slash slash www.blender.org Next will be uh, Avatar Workbench 
Machina Matrix makes a great workbench version of the avatar for both fitted and fitted mesh and basic clothing making. Um, it used to be when I first started doing this uh, that you got your blender or not blender file but your uh, avatar from uh, Domino Designs however and you can still get it from Domino Designs it's just an older version um, however the one by machine matrix um, is updated so you probably want to go that route and it gives you a little bit but a little bit more features in blender <coughs> um, they also uh, machine matrix also has uh, several purchasable packages of avastar if you're interested but at this point all you really need is the workbench avatar to to work from you can find the most recent version of the workbench at um, blog.machinamatrix.org um, forward slash avatar dash workbench <coughs> Workbench, it works in, in conjunction with Blender, so make sure to read the install directions and have Blender installed first. Also, keep in mind through, or keep in mind though, that these are not official avatars, Second Life avatars, but they are the most, the closest to the official avatar. For um, Second Life. <clears throat> Next up will be your avatar UV templates. At the very basic you will need GIMP and the templates. That's without ever using Blender. If you don't want to get into Blender that's what you want to get at least those two items. Now um, the templates are going to help and, you know, it helps you to know where your image is actually going to be applied on the uh, <clears throat> on the texture and where those clothing parts need to be. Um, so you need that's what you need the templates for. Uh, many people are using the templates from Robin Wood. You can find those templates at the following location. I'm not going to read off that whole UV or uh, IP address, but it's um, at www.robinwood.com, and you can find them on the cat in the catalog. Um, I provided you the the uh, location here. Um, I'm sorry, I can't actually put it in the notes because all uh, links need to be approved sites in order for uh, Google Ads to work, continue to work, so I can't actually add them there. But um, you can type it in and, and find it there. Um, I think they just have a, where you could just type in, uh, they have the links and stuff on there so you can find them that way. And, and you can also just type it in your search for um, Second Life UV templates, Robin Wood, and it should come up. Um, this is not the only available UV templates out there, by, mind you. You can use other ones. It's just a lot of people do use the ones from RobinWood.com. <clears throat> but you can use whichever ones you prefer. So let me recap the software list again. Um, that will be GIMP, Blender, Workbench, and your templates. The order in which you use these will vary depending on your own preferences as you develop your own working pattern and style or pipeline. So they, so some say, may say it. They call it a pipeline. All right. So where to start? Deciding on where to start is actually up to you. You can start by opening up GIMP and opening up the templates there. Or you can open up Blender and start by opening up a new workbench. For now, let's use GIMP for the, you know, this use GIMP, the first option. Um, if you have Photoshop, you can use Photoshop instead. Okay, so um, opening up GIMP, 
um, when you open up GIMP and you open the templates, you're going to want to choose either one of the male or the female templates. Um, obviously the one that I have open there is the female. But, um, or maybe I opened the male on that one, I don't know. Um, obviously it's been some time since I started to work on this and I keep getting distracted so it has been a process because there is so much that I can teach you about and yet uh, trying to keep it in as simple as possible was a challenge um, anyway uh, so choose one or the other um, I'm gonna use a shirt a t-shirt maybe with a logo on it as an example so that you can kind of get an idea of how clothing is made if you've never done it before. Now mind you it's very simple very simple. Um, I'm not going to go into all the wrinkles and, and the texture qualities and, and whatnot. I'm just giving you the simple basics to get you started and um, the rest of it is a little bit more advanced. So if you already know how to do this part, um, this is probably not the right tutorial for you. Um, anyway, uh, remember we are keeping this simple, as I was said. So this t-shirt may not be something to jump up and down over. Uh, you can learn how to improve your clothing over time. This is just going to be the basics of how to get started like I said for someone who's never done this before so I'm gonna switch to um, this is my GIMP window obviously I don't have the whole thing uh, I don't have this on the whole screen so it's the one um, layers and brushes windows you don't really see right now I can pull it over if I need to um, the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, is to locate your um, templates after you've loaded them on your computer. So I'm going to pause a minute here and I'm going to open mine. Okay, so I have opened up in the Robinwood uh, template that I have. Um, <clears throat> basically, this uh, template, I believe, is the one that works for either or male or female and um, I'm gonna show you how to make your own um, setup for a t-shirt a lot of people will use preset um, textures for this to create the t-shirts um, I'm not I'm gonna actually show you how to create that template uh, first thing you're going to want to do is you want a new layer. So we want the layer to be transparent. And you can see that on the layer window that it's got that. That's the one that we want active. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to turn the opacity down. If I can get a hold of it here, it, sometimes it doesn't like to let me do that. Okay, uh, about 65. I want to be able to see the template through it, um, the original template. And <coughs> if you have a tablet, if you don't, you can still do it with your mouse. Um, I'm going to actually use my tablet with my pen if I can. One second here. Okay. Had things kind of moved around here a little bit. Uh, like I said, I kind of like to use my tablet. Um, I'm going to get the pencil here. <clears throat> and uh, usually your t-shirt has oh you know what let's make that a little bigger so you can see <coughs> excuse me um, your t-shirt of course has a collar 
and it doesn't go all the way up the neck so you want to decide how far down the neck this is going to be probably within this line here hmm. why is that not being nice to me Maybe I turned it down too far. Okay, I totally forgot that I had a texture fill on there and it was trying to use the texture fill. <coughs> uh, you'll have to forgive me because GIMP usually is not um, the program that I use. I used to use uh, Photoshop 7 and when my computer died and I went to reload the program my disk is totally missing so I had to break down and decide to just use the free one because I wasn't going to pay for which you can. There is the one that you can pay for monthly that's online, but um, I can't really afford it myself at this time, point in time, so maybe I'll get back to it later. And um, I had turned the transparency up on this, and I'll turn it back down here. And just turn it down, which you can't see me doing it because it's off of the side of the window. As you can see the black going lighter. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now the thing with the t-shirt is um, you've got these little sections here that are different colors that run off the edge of the template. It's because you've got a little bit of overlap um, you want to fill that overlap gap in because part of what you will notice with um, some clothing is that it's got the lines on the side and it's <clears throat> a lot of times it's because that bleed area is not filled in so you want your fabric to kind of even though there's nothing really there it does create a little bit of line on your clothing if you don't have that filled in. <clears throat> and the other thing is this transparency. It's an actually, it's an alpha layer um, that it creates. Let me see if I can actually show you here. This is the, the alpha layer here. And the alpha layer in GIMP, it does pretty good auto to automatically fill in, but as you can see here, it's not really making the background black like it should. Because with the alpha layers, this would be a black and white image. And the black part would be the things that were transparent. And the white would be what is not transparent, what you see. And any shade in between will determine how transparent course black being the most transparent and any gray shade in between is anything coming closer to being white is actually going to be um, less opaque <clears throat> so that's something else to consider oh and if that layer is fuzzy on the edges um, it sometimes helps to adjust the alpha layer to fix the alpha layer when that happens. Um, you can always test that in the beta grid. And that's also a good part of what uh, Avastar and the, the um, workbench is good for as well because it helps you see is it going to be fuzzy, um, does it need to be adjusted is the texture image with all of these bumps that we don't actually have here going to be distorted too much. 
So, um, I don't really actually need to color that all in. I'm talking to you, talking to you guys and filling it in absentmindedly here. <clears throat> okay. Now, for ladies, if they tuck the shirt in, or anybody that tucks a t-shirt in, usually you don't need anything more than just the top template, but keep in mind, t-shirts are not, they don't stop at the waist, they go below the waist, so you'll have a little bit that needs to be below the waist. So I'm just going to fill that section that way. That's why I was saying I don't really need to color that all in. Um, the other thing is some of these lines on here indicate where the actual arm, the line across the arm, and it doesn't look straight and it's not going to. Um, because when it actually applies to the clothing, to the clothing to the body, it's not actually straight. So the template doesn't, you know, the template's dictating how those UVs apply to the actual clothing layer. Now you only have one arm in here, and that's because both arms are the same. <clears throat> at least on, <clears throat> excuse me, at least on um, the Second Life avatar, the, the uh, regular avatar. Now if you um, end up making four uh, pliers for mesh bodies that do have separate for left and right arm, then you can make m be more specific. Um, otherwise it's just the same on both sides, both arms. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, you can't have uh, one tattoo on one shoulder and a different one on the other in an SL because it's not... the UV maps don't um, really allow you to do that unless, of course, you are um, wearing an object that allows you to do that. <clears throat> and we'll fill that in. So you can literally make your own uh, template this way. And I mean, this is, it's simple. Um, if you wanted this to be, say, uh, it's a woman's shirt or something, and It's crossed over in the back, or I know that's not straight, but uh, remember, I'm doing simple here. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not actually trying to be perfect. And um, all the areas that you leave unpainted, like this here, <coughs> would be open. So if they just had that open back, or, you know, this might not even be there, but um, just as an example. So you make your own pattern that way, and then how you apply the texture itself will determine whether it's a good quality or not. And I will say, you know, your textures, um, your shadows, your wrinkles, all of those things can make a difference as to whether or not it's a uh, good-looking shirt or if it's not. This probably, like I said, won't be something to jump up and down over because it's just the basics. This is, you know, the process, the starting process, and how you make it better is up to you. 
<clears throat> I don't know, because I did that, I gotta fill that in. <clears throat> so, just a plain black shirt. And this has no shadow value, no lights values, nothing at all. Now, if you were going to do hmm, a better t-shirt than this, you would probably need also to open the template for the lower half, because as I said before, a t-shirt doesn't just come to the waist and stop. Um, so you would actually have to cover part of the upper part of the pant to make a t regular t-shirt as you would see. But um, for now, I'm just going to leave it at this. I'm going to turn my opacity back up just so you can kind of get an idea. <clears throat> and I'm going to zoom out. So you see the template in the background and I'm going to turn that one off so that you can't see it. And this gives you an idea of that t-shirt. And it's just very, very basic. Now you literally could take this and upload it and have this black, but it would have no texture whatsoever on it. Another thing I'm going to show you now that we have that t-shirt in there and we're looking at the uh, at the alpha layer here you can see uh, the background's black and the foreground is white and if I turn all of these others off oh I thought it was going to show that one yeah it's just um well, because it's black, it's just going to come up, show up, turn up as black. But you can see what was selected that way. Now I know in um, uh, Photoshop, if I did it that way, I could just modify the uh, alpha layer itself. And I'm pretty sure you can still do that with uh, GIMP as well, to do it the same way. So that's the t-shirt. Um, let me do a logo. Okay, so I'm going to actually um, paste in something that I did a while back. This is just a, a staff that I made. <clears throat> and it needs to, it's an image of it, but it needs to be cleaned up and whatnot. But, um, I just want to show you how you can use something else to, uh, let's see, I want to rotate that a little bit. <clears throat> can have a little straighter. <coughs> Excuse me. And of course it's being slow. There we go. It wasn't as a layer, so apparently it wasn't going to let me do it. And let's go in a little closer so we can, oops, not out, in, zoom in. And like I said before, nothing to jump up and down about. Just to kind of give you an idea. Now, 
the other thing is you can turn down your opacity and see about where that logo is going to sit and move it up or down, side to side, wherever you need to do. I'll rotate that the other way a little bit because I think I did too much. <clears throat> and why are we? There we go. Giving me a fit, this computer, I'm telling you. Okay. Let's uh, turn the opacity back up. And then you can see what that did, and put some lettering, let's say... We are going to make... Now well, let's do this red... Red lettering. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and obviously that's underneath because I've got it underneath there. So let's turn the size up if it wants to behave. Oh, you know what? Definitely not like um, the other program that I'm used to. Okay, I'm going to actually, and this is the reason why this is underneath that, is because it is actually underneath that, so... <clears throat> Let me make it a layer. And I'm going to, oh, will it let me drag that layer down? I don't know, it's being a pain in the butt. Oh, you know what? Ah, again, not like my other program. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Still up. There we go. Much better. Okay, so <clears throat> some of that you may have to play with a little bit. As you can see, I'm still needing to do so because why is it keep grabbing out of the one? I'm not used to this um, this program because I don't use it. Don't really use it that much. And you can obviously. Oh, what is it grabbing now? <coughs> Not what I wanted it to grab. But you can see, um, you could make a t shirt this way. And ultimately, you can, um, when you go to save this, you have to do it as an export. And <coughs> let's see, t shirt example. And you don't want JPEG because you need it to actually have the um, 
transparency behind it. So you want the PNG file and where am I exporting that to? Okay. And then export. As soon as my computer catches up with whatever the heck it's doing in the background. Now, I'm going to show you a little something here. Um, this is the beta grid. Oh. I was working on some shoes. But you can test your clothing in world in the beta grid without ac actually having to have Linden because the uh, Linden Labs gives you some Linden to work with on the beta grid. So you would just go in and upload the image. And I'm going to upload it from right there, which is my example. And you can see it's got the background the way it should be. I can also, um, see upper body oops that's the lower body how'd I get the lower body no okay and you can see how that looks and if you want to see how it looks on mail of course this is gonna look kind of funny for a man because it's cropped right where at the waist because we didn't do the waist, but um, if a woman's wearing a pair of jeans, eh, she you really don't notice the difference, um, especially if it's over top. So I'm gonna upload that. And for this, I had to. Oh, turn off my alphas and I should get to look at my god ugly feet, my SL feet. <coughs> and for whatever reason, it's not that I turned off all of my alphas here. Let's see. over a little bit to open my inventory back up and see what am I wearing no that alpha nope hang on I'm gonna see what this is going on here okay since I had to um, make a test shirt anyway. Um, whenever you're going to make some new clothing layer item for your legacy, you just hit the add and the clothing and select what item you're going to make. Now this is for legacy bodies. This is the original body for a second life. Um, if you're doing it for a mesh body, you'll have um, appliers that you'll have to use instead. Um, so I just made the new shirt, and of course it came up, and I renamed the shirt, and I put it on. And in order to change that, so we're going to edit to outfit. Go into the little part for the shirt. And then I want 
to add that image that I just loaded. <coughs> and as you can see, there is the shirt. My AO just keeps putting me in awkward positions here. Let's see if I can't make this a little bit easier. Pose stand. There we go. Now, um, you can see this is where I was talking about the adjustments needing to be done to to the uh, alpha layers and this is also why testing your clothing before you do a final upload is a good idea. <coughs> it's also where um, the blender files will help uh, because you can look right, you can see it and make adjustments on it in blender as well. See all the little grannies now. The larger your image, the, the better that you can adjust that. And uh, of course I got a bunch of stuff turned off and I got mesh bodies showing through it. Um, like I said, this isn't something to jump up and down about. It's just a beginning, it's a beginning point um, for those who didn't know how to do any of this to begin with. And then um, I'll probably make some more tutorials on how to refine the process. Um, I know there's a lot of them out there that just go right into it. And eh, it works for some people, maybe not so much for others who have no idea where to start. Um, this is just to give you the idea where to start. Okay, so that's for the legacy body, but... You might be wondering, you know, how do you do it for um, the mesh body that I was wearing when I first opened up SL, and um, <clears throat> that is a different process that you can actually do with Omega pliers, Omega pliers. Let's see if it never wants to let me do that. <coughs> Can never just use the shortcut. Oops, that's not what I want. Where is that? There it is. Um, I have an Omega Relay system, which um, I'm wearing a Matreya body. Not right now, but um, that's the one that I have. So I'd have to add that. And then there is, um, let's see, did it transfer over? There is um, the applier kit that you can get from Omega. It doesn't cost anything for creators. So it's really very good because you can use it for um, any anybody that uses Omega appliers can use it and doesn't use uh, its own special template. Yeah, and it would be this right here, the Omega Applier Developers Kit that you can get from Omega. <coughs> I think you just go to their in-world store and you can pick that up from them. Um, the standard kit appliers. Uh, let's see, was it in here? I've got it in here a couple of times. Uh, they give you complete directions on how to use uh, their kit. I think most of their information is online through their blog. <coughs> oh, let's see. I got that turned over so you can't even see what I'm talking about. Now that's not going to help. This is an applier that I, I made for my avatar. Uh, let me see if 
So that's the kit for Matreya. I must not have unload uploaded it. <coughs> Excuse me, God. Okay, um I don't know if it'll send it here. Open. That's what I want. Okay. So it gives you all the instructions in here and then the web page, of course, for the instructions on how to use the applier. Um, the biggest part about using appliers is that when you are making something from a clothing item that you're using with appliers, uh, let me show you, you need to use the UUID in the note cards that go into the appliers. So in order to copy that you just open up the image and if you click on this it's going to copy that UUID to the uh, <coughs> to to the clipboard and then let me see if I can get a hold of this. Might be nice. I'm trying to make the window smaller and it's just not doing it here. I can do it this way. Uh, see how it copies it there. And that's the UUID for that t-shirt that I just did. And this of course is just in the um, beta grid so it's not not anything active on the active grid. Um, and then in your let's see if I can remember where it's at. You have to have the scripts in your um, applier, of course that comes with it. And, oh, that's right, um, this applier actually, when you put the, uh, text, the note card in there, after you drop the note card in there, it disappears, because it, it eats the note card, and it's supposed to, because you don't want that in there where somebody else can read it. <clears throat> but you can get all of the appliers for anything on Matreya. Slink, um, what's the male ones? Uh, Slink's one, uh, Miriam, if that's how you pronounce it, I don't remember. Um, there's a lot of various ones that you can get the appliers for. <coughs> so, that is all I'm going to do on this video for today. Um, I will kind of continue this a little bit more on how to do this same process with uh, with Blender the next time with the next video that I do. Um, but that gives you an idea of how to start uh, and there are other tutorials um, on YouTube that you can find for uh, texture, fabrics, um, doing wrinkles, um, making the shirt more realistic. Because obviously this isn't that realistic, <laughs> but it's a beginning if for those that didn't know how to do it before. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, look forward to enhancing your knowledge with the next one. Bye for now.